Uh, Tannis, what was that? An explosion? Roland's dead? Thank you for... Thank you for telling me. Please go now. It seems there is more than one way to acquire siren powers. That would explain... <clears throat> yes, anyway. Everybody said you were dead. Roland said you were dead. I want it all! Every planet, every star. This is all my fault. I hide in Sanctuary. He attacks it. I draw some graffiti on his cliff, and he kills Roland. It's my fault, Minion, and I'm tired of running. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, wait, wait! And it goes in one ear, and right out the other. People talking shit, but... We're back. Finally, how long has it been since the last cut co A while. Okay. That's right, boys. Gearbox is back at it again to bless our souls with some more cut content. You can't keep getting away with it! Honestly, I was gonna have this out much earlier, but Wonderlands happened and then summer arrived, so that's great. Had to wait until it rained so I can finally have some slight relief off the pollen demonizing my body. That stereotype that it constantly rains in the UK? Lies. I swear to God, if I see another American in the comment section like, Oh, y'all are so weak, man. 30 degrees Celsius. We have like 60 here in the winter. Fahrenheit, though. I will literally steal your air conditioning and we'll see who has the last laugh. I, I won't use it in a video, though, because then... Then the audio will sound like this. It's not very efficient, is it? That is a vacuum cleaner. I don't actually own a fan or anything. I ain't no pussy. I say that and then eat 50 ice creams a day. If you didn't know, I'm actually working on a permanent cure for hay fever. So if you are also getting killed by grass, make sure to subscribe and the cure will be delivered to you first. If you don't have hay fever, subscribe anyway. It makes a very cool sound when you click that button. <laughs> Also, if you like, at the same time as someone else, you'll unlock the golden like button. God damn, the golden like button. You guys remember that? God, memories, man. That's for self-promo over. Enough talking about grass. It's absolutely no secret that the Borderlands franchise has had many changes during development and a ton of cut content that was created along the way. Take Borderlands 1, for example. The story was originally completely different. Or Borderlands 3, where Handsome Jack originally returned as the the main vi- Spoilers, we'll cover that in the next video. And today, I'll be your ultimate catalogue to Borderlands 2's cut content. Just like with Borderlands 1, I believe I have absolutely everything here, and shit, they did a good job hiding it all because the research for this video took like three times longer than the Borderlands 1 one. Just like in that video, we're gonna start off with the small stuff and gradually ascend into the bigger stuff, although that's not a promise, because last time we said that, we said that a cut vehicle is is more important than every cut map combined and yeah we just rolled with it that's bound to happen again whatever let's just kick off with cut items now by items i'm not referring to weapons or shields but rather interactable things like the buffs in bloody harvest or the health packs in borderlands 1 speaking of which health packs technically originally made a return in borderlands 2 this time called turtle up and were manufactured by pangolin despite being very similar to borderlands 1's health packs they worked slightly different. Rather than just straight up healing you, the turtle up kits gave you 3 minutes of damage resistance and gave you a green on screen bubble effect. To give you an idea, a similar effect can be seen in the Clan Wars questline, though it appears in a different colour. Also, it's worth mentioning that this will drop from enemies just like money does. From what I can tell, you couldn't straight up obtain these from vendors or anything like that. Wisp jars were also cut from the game. These were one of the buffs you can find in the Bloody Harvest Headhunter, and in short, they came in every element excluding slag and summoned the ball which followed you around and damaged nearby enemies. Kinda cool, but I imagine it would scale very poorly in endgame. Definitely seems like more of an early game item. Next, there's... There... There is no next. But there is a next section, so onto the enemies we go. The first enemy we're gonna be having a look at is this Stalker x Indo Tyrant x Coiled Hybrid. Seriously, this guy ain't like the other girls. This one's quirky. I should also clarify that once again, yes, I am counting unused concept art as cut content. Going off of 
with its uniqueness, I genuinely have no clue where they would fit this in the current BL2 we now have, but, but I'm gonna give it a go anyway. Now trust me, I ain't no animal expert, but I have a goldfish, so I'm more than qualified to confirm that these things from the dinosaurs are scales, and obviously scales are used to do something underwater. Notice how the British guy said water and not water? Yeah, yeah, actual god moment. Also, their tails do give off some sea creature vibes. So maybe, and this is my guess here, they could appear in Wambam Island because that is a very watery environment. Ooh, okay, this, this one's an interesting yet well-known one you can find in the game files. It looks like Motomama from the Campaign of Carnage DLC was originally a raid boss. Hmm. Now, I personally am a very big Pyro Pete stan, so I'm glad he made the cut. I don't really see how you can make Motor Mama an intense fight. Like, what are you gonna do? Just make it turn around faster? <laughs> Coming up next is Roscoe's children. Four of them as raid bosses in the Hammerlock DLC. This was actually scrapped along with the cut audio of Shade informing you that Roscoe has given birth to many children and you should hunt them all down. Very strange that they're found in the Hammerlock DLC's files instead of Captain Scarlet's, but okay. Anyway, the names of the four children were Roscoe Jr. the Invincible, Fiatus the Invincible, Hagaram, Hagaram, Haram the Invincible, and of course, finally, Torflux the Invincible. Not gonna lie, it sounds kinda interesting, but fighting four raid bosses which are the same species could get a bit boring. And finally, this one can be found in the game files too, a Chrysalis raid boss. Ooh, what? I genuinely had no idea about this until I did my research for this video, and this fight could be awesome if you ask me. I can imagine the crystal mechanics being super fun, unlike some other crystal mechanics, and chrysalisks are just fun enemies to fight, to be honest. Also, I wonder if it could be a good money farm considering chrysalisks drop tons of it. Moving on to the weapons, and the first one is less of a weapon but more of a manufacturer. I'm not gonna make a whole section for one manufacturer, you know? And that manufacturer is Atlas. Yeah, the Atlas logo can be found in the game files, so it seems as if they were originally going to return. And yeah, that's it for manufacturers. Like I said, there's only one. There's no trace of SNS munitions. I'm sorry, boys. Honestly, they're overrated anyway. The first actual weapon we're going to be having a look at is the infamous effervescent variant of the Infinity Pistol, also known as the Fire Drill. Unlike the Infinity, the Fire Drill came in fire and fire only with a 100% ignite chance which is kinda cool. And apart from that there's nothing else to know, just like every other effervescent it's just a clear copy and paste with some changed stats and no unfortunately you cannot save edit and use this item in game. I'm not sure if you would count this as cut content, maybe it's more of an easter egg but I'll throw it in there anyway. You know your favourite raid boss, Master Gi? Well the rocket launcher he holds can actually be save edited into your game. It's known as the error message and it's actually fully functional. The red text is this gun should never drop and yeah looking back on it it's definitely an easter egg. Why, why the fuck did I put this in it? <laughs> Next, as we all know, legendary grenades exist in Borderlands 2 and every manufacturer has made them except Bandit. For whatever reason, there's no legendary Bandit grenades in BL2. But little did you know, there is material for them. Material is just a fancy word for texture or for you under 12s, Fortnite skins put for items. So that clearly indicates they were once planned but never became a reality. There was also Slag Nova and Slag spike shields at one point and the weapon design for most guns was completely different. Like, for example, Bandit originally had a more COV-like look to them and TDO had assault rifles. And judging by how they look, you can probably tell other TDO weapons originally had a different theme to them as well. Oh yeah, and uh, since we're here, I feel like I should point out that we've been saying Vladov wrong all along. Oh hell yeah, that's a Vladov. Oh my goodness guys, would you look at that, it's the infamous Vladov Shredifier. Damn, okay, what do we cover now? Story? or gameplay? Gameplay or story? Wh which is less important? Uh, I guess 
gameplay. For this, we're going to be having a look at various trailers and tech demos from before the game released. The first tech demo I'll be showing you is from 2011 and was originally shown off at PAX West, I think, probably. I, 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 whatever, man. Who, who cares where it's from? Circular minimap. Is it just me or does our current one just look much better? So you know the section where you need a bandit technical from the dust to honk at a bandit gate in the Freehorns Valley? Well, it looks like that originally wasn't necessary at all, as all you had to do was shoot the chain open. On God, wish this stayed. I hate the dust. Oh yeah, and like I mentioned earlier, very different bandit gun design. It also looks like the Borderlands 1 money UI originally made a return. This is weapon that we're using, check this out, it's called a TDR manufacturer. This manufacturer is like the Walmart of gun manufacturers. Top tier commentary, Randy. Yeah, weapon cards definitely looked very different at first, but the current vibe is still kind of there. Badmore was originally called the Torturer, which sounds 10 times more badass, but honestly, it's a type of name you'd see in Borderlands 1 rather than 2. Okay, onto the skill tree menu. Right away, you'll be able to notice that Salvador has a different pose and that some skill logos look different. I mean, even the description of Gunzerk, which was originally called Dual Wield, was better and more simple. We also had a cut skill called Green Fire, which, in short, if you corroded an enemy on fire, it would run to other enemies and set them on fire. Kinda cool, but yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna lie to you, it would definitely perform like shit, especially late game, so I understand why they removed it and I'm glad. Dude. To look how cool the loading screens looked. So much saturation, so much, so different, so, so long. Jesus Christ, man, thank God for SSDs. I really like how originally when you entered the Bloodshot Ramparts, there was a long elevator to take you up. In the final product, we just get there through a door. It doesn't really make much sense considering it's so high up. Like, it, it's a dam, yet we entered the structure from such a low area. You discovered bloodshot ramparts. The you discovered font is different. It's not huge, but but it's cut content, okay? It also looks very fallouty, which if you recall from the last Borderlands cut content video was a very big inspiration for him. Warden was originally blue. Yeah, Blue Warden. Spread the word, I guess. And his introduction is followed by this really dope Roland title card, which I really like for some reason. Also, Roland has his BL1 design. You, you hear that? Is that, is that energy from Roland? What is this bullshittery I see before my very eyes? Yeah, it sounds like they brought back his original voice actor, which... Was there really a need to replace him anyway and make Roland the most boring dickhead of all time? Warden was originally fought on the run. I assume if you didn't defeat him in time, Big Smoke calls you up like... All we had to do was follow the damn train, CJ! Finally, for this tech demo, after defeating Warden, Aloda knocks you off of a dam and you get this very cool looking cutscene. Now, this could have been for cinematic purposes to make people show for the tech demo later on, but... But, but I'm doing the same thing with this video, so let's just act like this was originally going to happen, please. Lengthy tech demo numero uno finito. Let's check out a smaller one to let your brain rest for just a tiny bit. Oh, shit. I actually do know where this one came from. Sweet. In the Gamescom 2011 tech demo, you can see that Bully Mongs originally had their own title card. Interesting. Won't lie, if they did this for every enemy in the game, I would probably have a stroke, but interesting. And uh, yeah, that's that one over and done with. I told you it's a smaller one. Next up, I want to point out an interesting find after looking back on one of the trailers for the game. In the Borderlands 2 Doomsday trailer, you can see Terramorphis and the Three Horns Divide. Now this could be just for promotional reasons, because as we all know, even Borderlands 3 overdid this with putting characters out of place, but... Let's not rule out the possibility. Alrighty, hope you enjoyed your rest, but I am once again asking you to pay attention since we're going to be having a look at another large tech demo. This one is from... Dunno. First interesting thing to point out is that when guns are in, Salvador's action skill duration is displayed through a ticking watch at the bottom rather than just a depleting slider going from top to bottom. We had some rocket launchers that shot white stuff. I, I'm not gonna make a cum reference today. Cum reference? What the fuck is a cum reference, man? When you and your friends dueled, you had no dome around you, which could have created potential for some very fun sniper battles. Yeah, removing this was a pretty big mistake, man. The inventory UI looked slightly different. The grenade logo at the bottom is more rotated. Oh boy. 
Borderlands recalled and said you liked screen pollution. Introducing Borderlands 2's unreleased corrosive dot. Like, ooh, the fuck is that, man? How do you expect me to see? Uh, rumor has it this is the first thing Amy Schumer's child sees during birth. And one more thing, and I believe the final thing for the gameplay section, so we're gonna end it big, is that your hip fire aim when using a sniper rifle originally had a dot in the middle to indicate where you're aiming. On to story we go. There is so much, man. And now, a word from our sponsor. M m my Discord server. <laughs> Gonna get this out of the way fast, but honestly, I was recently wondering why the place isn't as active as I thought it would be, and that's because I haven't promoted the place on the channel for over a year, and I feel like I owe it to the cool guys who are still constantly active there to give them some attention. So y'all should totally join, it's completely free, and we have a ton of epic conversations there, and not to get you too excited, but joining puts an extra 5 inches on the girth of your arsehole, so yeah, become one with the kittens, link in the description. Add over. Now, I'm a gameplay guy, so I'd always put that above story, but after doing all this research, every Borderlands game really has the most cut content in the story section. So much so, actually, that I'll only be showing you the big and interesting stuff, or else we'll be here for an entire decade, you know? I'm not gonna be showing you things like cut vendor voice lines, because there's like 10 minutes total of them, and do, do any of us really care? Bandit guns! <laughs> Bandit guns! Yeah! But the only piece of dialogue I will point out that doesn't directly link to the story is the new you respawn station. So you know how when you respawn you get this sassy, underpaid Hyperion employee speaking to you? Well, originally it was Handsome Jack. Yeah, here, have a listen. This is hilarious. I own the machine that just respawned you. So every time you die, you're actually paying me. <laughs> Wait, is that ironic or is that one of those things you think is ironic but actually isn't? Like a cripple doing stand-up? I don't know. Thanks for dying. I just bought a pony made of diamonds. I'm considering going cha-ching right now, but that would be really immature. So let's just say that with 10% of what you just paid me by dying, I could cure universal hunger. But no, that, that money was better spent reviving you. Now, fun little fact for you, these voice lines were actually present in the Switch version of BL2 at release. Now, I don't think they patched it out and they could still be in the game. Don't quote me on that, I don't have a Switch, I haven't checked, but um, I, I saw it on Reddit, so <laughs> there's enough confirmation. Alright, it's time to go to the start of the game. Um... <laughs> So we really liked that idea, but there was a, a beginning of the game, a whole different beginning of the game that was like, Handsome Jack was running this coliseum and you were gonna be in it and he was gonna like betray you midway through and take all your guns and kick you out into the tundra. And the reason for that initially was like, well, let's have Handsome Jack do something personally <coughs> violent and aggressive to you so that you don't like him so it's more of a revenge story. And then we sort of changed that around because we weren't doing enough things with like making the vault and alien lore matter and stuff like that. So uh, we instead started you off in the, in the tundra, which was cool, but like, oh shit, now that whole point of our game, the entire point of our game being kill this one guy, you don't ever meet him Yeah, now. it was because you, were, you spent the first five to ten minutes, um, you know, fighting in his coliseum, and then you win, you're the grand champion, and then your reward was, look at all these guns, and you're like, yeah! You grab them all, and then he was gonna just be like, yoink, and take them all away. And we had a, I think it was Mikey had an idea for the character select screen, where your cursor, I, I still, part of me still wishes we had done this, I where know, your cursor was, was Handsome good. Jack's gun, and you were going through the train, and the door was open on the train, and you, you all the char player characters had their hands tied behind them, as the just, you could, whoo, you could see the sort of landscape going by, and the gun was your cursor, and when you would move the cursor to the other Vault Hunters, he would go, eeny, meeny, miny, and whenever you chose your character, he'd go, mo, boom, and shoot them, and they'd fall out the back of the train, and that would be like the character you'd chosen. And then you also had these Vault Hunter introduction lines, similar to how Marcus introduces you in BL3. A commando, courageous and driven. A siren, whose wisdom is matched only by her beauty. The gun zerker, who makes up in brute force what he lacks in subtlety. And of course, the epitome of precision, the assassin. The power inside the next vault could bring peace to Pandora. Only badasses like you could brave the horrors of Pandora and find it. Which is why you've gotta die. I'm fairly certain these were gonna play before Jack was supposed to shoot with a playable character. I hope that didn't hurt too much. 
Think of me like a safety net. I took the liberty of uploading your DNA to a new U station here on Pandora. Not everyone on the planet can afford this luxury, so be aware this will cost you money every time you die. Yeah, understandable why they removed this. Are we at Liarsburg? I don't need my eye attached to remember those sounds. Minion, you've outdone yourself. I haven't been anywhere near this place in over four years. One ticket to Minion's Rise of Gru, please. Minion! 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 Everybody! Everybody! Minion! Minion! Have you seen that UK cinemas actually banned wearing a suit to that movie? God, wild times, man. That's a top 10 watch mojo video for the weirdest laws of all time. But nah, I do get it on one hand, though, because there are those utter pricks who just go into the cinema to talk or, or, or throw bananas at people, believe it or not. And if you're one of them, just, just die. And open! Remix! Oh, 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 open! God, 2012 was just a different breed, man. I wouldn't be surprised if the mission had Skrillex playing in the background as well, to be honest. Your first interaction with Scooter was originally pretty different after he catches you hacking his catcher ride in the beginning. Whoa, you really think you're just getting away from hacking my business? Now, I ain't no genius, but I'm also an idiot. You feel me? You and me? Gonna have face to face soon. Oh shit! I remember you. Now get the hell out! Ha! Ha! You be that crap cracking some bitch who hacked one of my catcher rides. Told you we'd meet Mono, a gender in specific Mono. Yo, lads, you know how BL2 makes it pretty obvious that Jimbo Hodonk is Scooter's father? Well, um. <laughs> <laughs> liking it, liking it. Last fuel cell now is in my safe in Marcus's bank, also known as my dad, and also to some, a staggeringly alcoholic arms dealer. Yeah, we're a tight-knit family that rips each other off the various business ventures and the such. Bruh. You're a doll. Finks in the bathroom. Lucky man. Wish I had someone like you looking for me. Catch me if you can, sucker! Fink ran out on you? His shield shrugs off bullets like nothing. But it'll break into pieces if you punch it in the right spot. Shooting won't do any good. Chase him down and punch him out. He's winded. Now's your chance. I'm not squawking about the firehawk. You'll have to smack it out of me. After multiple reminders, you end up beating the shit out of Fink and start your journey to finding the most annoying redhead woman in the universe. Everything mostly plays out the same after that up until we find out the hidden tinderbox in Tundra Express was hidden there by Roland. I stashed a fire weapon in one of the snowmen if you need it. Just shoot the snowman in the head and you'll get your gun. Nothing major, but hey, kinda cool. I, be I bet you didn't know that, did you? We, we always thought that was just random or an easter egg by the devs. No, Roland left it there, okay? Life-changing information. Uh, so let me get this straight. Uh, Mordecai, a staggering alcoholic whose best friend is a bird, told you about some power cores on one of my impossibly guarded trains, and you went with it. Seriously. You vault hunters dropped on your heads as embryos? He has a point. A bit of a well-known one here, but the reason why Wilhelm could defeat a bunch of level 69 vault hunters but not a level 10 one is because Jack poisoned him right before the fight. So, Wilhelm nearly killed your vault hunter friends a couple of years ago and you just blow him away like any other grunt? Yeah, that's because I poisoned him before you guys fought. Worth it, though, to make you think I didn't want you to have that power core. But, uh... Psst. Spoilers. I did. Roland originally foreshadowed his death, cause you know, well, why not? What, what an M. Night Shyamalan twist that is, I did not see that coming. Oh. Time to think up some memorable last words. This is all my fault! I hide in Sanctuary, he attacks it. I draw some graffiti on his cliff, and he kills Roland! It's my fault, minion! And I'm tired of running! Yeah, Claptrap blaming himself is kinda depressing, but if you didn't know, we're just gonna put that aside. When he mentions Jack's cliff, he's alluding to Mount Jackmore, a cut side mission where you have to blow up a literal mountain with Jack's face on. Have you seen that mountain Jack is chiseling his likeness into? Talk about an eyesore! Were I a younger robot, I'd head up to that mountain and blast Jack's face right out of it! But I'm not, so you'll have to.
to. Obviously, this didn't make it into the final cut of the game, but it was referenced in the Borderlands 3 So Happy Together trailer, which was kinda cool. Shout out to all my 0.5% of homies who actually understood the reference. And speaking of which, it looks like Claptrap built himself a pair of legs and actually made it to the Vault of the Warrior, but he was a bit late to the party. That's right, Jack! I conquered your stairs! Prepare to feel the wrath of a Claptrap with legs! Aww! He's already dead? Just like everyone else was late to his. And I think that's it for the story, right? No, 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 it isn't. Oh, wait, no, no, it isn't. You you guys remember Lieutenant Davis by chance? You know, you know, the Lieutenant Davis who opened the door for you that one time and then got nuked? Well, it, it turns out he originally survived. Very cool. <sighs> We're going to avenge Roland. I promise you that. And that is it for the main story. Nope. No, no it's not. Crypto from the future here. Hello. I forgot to include this in the video because I'm an actual sped, but there's a side mission that exists in the base game called Bearer of Bad News, except a feature where you can tell Tina that Roland died was removed. Roland's dead? Thank you for... Thank you for telling me. Please go now. Here, I was saving this for a rainy day, but I hope it can help you take down Jack. Please go now. And that is it for the main story. Now, I bet you're thinking, Oh, I I'm so excited for him to talk about the DLC, but, but honestly, nothing of importance changes. Literally, it it's just filled with alternate lines. It's not really worth mentioning. Except one. Commander Lilith and the fight for Sanctuary originally teased Tannis becoming a siren in the Sirentology quest, but obviously, this didn't end up happening. Okay, Aldish, I got a complete history of Angel's phase shift capabilities. Apparently, her powers didn't manifest until she was five years old. When did yours first appear, Lilith? Well, that's weird. I was born with mine. It seems there is more than one way to acquire siren powers. That would explain... <clears throat> yes, anyway. Good mission, everyone! I assume because they thought it would be a much better idea to completely spoil it a month or two later in a Borderlands 3 demo showcase just because... <sighs> That they had to promote Ice Cube. Navigated. Seriously, great job, Gearbox marketing team. Y'all a bunch of fucking geniuses. <sighs> Okay, Jesus Christ, I've been recording for around 1 hour and 53 minutes and I think I've covered just about everything, so I think now is a pretty good spot to end the video. The next cut content video we have coming up is, what, the, the pre-sequel, right? I, I don't even know if that game has enough to make a whole video on, but I, I guess we'll find out. But uh, yeah, hope you all enjoyed, hope it was worth the wait, it, it better have been. I bought BL2 on PC for this just to look at the game files, so I'm hoping, I'm hoping I'll break even with this video. And uh, yeah, I hope you all have a great rest of your day and I'll see you all in the next one. Stay classy. Peace.